What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs in proper vlog format today. Um, just wanted to do a fun little video to keep you guys updated on what's going on and uh, I'm flying the Sumo tomorrow which I built on this channel and it's just kind of been sitting idly by since I finished it. So for one, if you want to pause this video and go check out the video where I built this guy, you can click in the top right corner. Uh, I did it really weird. I like painted everything, then built it like a model car, which was pretty entertaining. But it's just because it's an Aerotech kit and everything kind of snaps together and you put it together with CA. Improving that I do really still fly like every size rocket, I am really, really excited about this. First of all, this is the first time I've loaded a 4120 case in a long, long time. Probably since like 2012 when I flew my Dark Star at the Johnson Space Center. That is really the last time I can remember loading one of these guys. It was a G64, but that's not what this is. This is an Aerotech G138. The G138 is a little bit unique in that you technically have to be level one certified to fly it at a Tripoli or NAR launch because of that 138 Newton's average thrust number. Uh, what's special about it is that it's a single core or single grain like monolithic blue thunder with no liner. So the propellants cast straight into the liner tube. There's no casting tubes or it is a casting tube. Interesting argument to be made. I don't really know. Also, I kind of forgot how nice the little snap together ejection charge lid is on these guys. So that's pretty cool. But it should take the old sumo here about 1700 feet, but it's going to do it very quickly. It's a pretty aggressive motor for this case and it's super cool. Uh, I think it's going to go down as probably my favorite cheap rocket motor because right now you can get these for about 21 bucks. I think the problem is because of that single grain assembly you have to pay hazmat so find yourself a local vendor that sells one or throw it on an order where you're ordering more stuff with hazmat because the hazmat is a killer in fact I think if you order just that the hazmat's like 10 more dollars than the motor itself but yeah other than that this is just a stock built Aerotech Sumo uh, you like the new workbench setup? It's because um, after getting laid off, well, technically before I got laid off because I knew it was coming, I ordered a whole bunch of vinyl stuff so I could kind of get back into the vinyl game a little bit. Um, I got this big plotter. If you need any custom signs or anything for your business, let me know. Um, as of as of right now, I don't really have any intentions of making decals for rockets, which I think is shooting myself in the foot a little bit just because. I have all of you lovely people that could be potential customers and I can make pretty much anything even on a pretty big scale. However, I just have a lot of respect for Mark Hayes, StickerShock23.com. He's been helping me out for well over a decade now and I don't really feel like stepping on his territory for one because, like I said, he's kind of got the, the market cornered, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's his thing and he's very good at it. And while I do believe there should be competition in pretty much every business and that, you know, monopolies are bad, I don't really see it in the monopoly type way with Mark. He's just a really good guy with a really good product. And, uh, of course, you guys know he helped us out with the Arcus decals, which was super cool, especially when I blew it and forgot them. He sent us another set in, like, two days. Super cool guy. But before I load this all up, um, I'm going to do the shoot release again. We're going to try it. Every time I fly my shoot release, it does not work. Every time somebody else flies it, it works fine. So I'm going to give it a shot again. But uh, a quick little rundown of everything i got going on here. Because a lot of people ask for like a tour of all my rockets. And it's a little bit chaotic in here because we just put this workbench in. So everything kind of just got shoved to the side. But I'll show you what we've got in the pipeline uh, vaguely. First and foremost, you might be able to hear that the 3D printer is running, and it's because it is, the Ender 3 V2. Um, I'm not going to tell you what that project is. The Patreon folks already know, but here is a little hint for you. Um, also, from the point that I'm recording this, I have one week to build, finish, and fly that project. It's flying it far literally next weekend. So I decided I should get started on that because... Wait, here's kind of uh, what's in my pipeline, so to speak. Here's all the inerts. There's no propellant in here, but uh, this is a CTI M1675 pink that I'm kind of leaning towards putting in this competitor for because it would go really high and it would be really cool. But I also sort of wanted to put it in my 5-inch Punisher, which is hanging out right back there. And uh, yeah, that's to be decided. And then I really want to fly the Little John again, of course, a 3-inch Punisher. I have a K1100. I have flown a K1100 in the 3-inch Punisher before, but 
Uh, because I've done it, it makes me kind of not want to do it. And then a couple other cool projects I'll just touch on. You don't need to see them. They're just, you know, boxes right now. But I have a 4-inch to 2-inch um, Mad Cow Nike Tomahawk 2-stage, which is something I really wanted to get to this winter. So we're going to try our best. But since the whole layoff thing, I've been working freelance and delivery driving. So my work days got very, very long. It's like 11 o'clock right now. I just got finished working. I'm going to quickly get everything together to go to this rocket launch tomorrow and then probably come back from the rocket launch and go deliver some more DoorDash stuff. So, you know, it is what it is. That's how just, that's just how life goes sometimes. Say lovey. But anyway, yeah, let's, uh, let's fly the Sumo G138. Oh, also worth noting, I forgot to put the retainer on the Sumo when I built it. And when I moved, I lost it. So I'm just going to tape that motor in. I know, I'm sorry, but that's what's gonna happen. One other thing, spool, spool. I'm thinking I'll just, uh, there's a hole in there that's not quite 54 millimeters, I'm just gonna hog it out and put a 54 millimeter tube in there, and we're gonna figure out a recovery gear setup. Oh yeah, sorry, that's my note from Lof on YouTube, Losing All Hope Was Freedom, shout out. Cool dude. Um, just, I have the K1100, that seems a little gratuitous, but it would be kinda cool. Anyway, I just have this big wooden spool. You guys know the thing about spools. It's all vibes. Nobody really knows why it works, but it does. They're stable and they fly. So we're just going to do that sometime soon. A custom fabricated aluminum motor retainer. Just tape the case by the closure to the motor tube. And uh, it's not coming out. Don't be me, bring SD cards. Okay, yeah, so like I just showed in the clip before the rocket flew, I didn't bring my SD cards for my A7, so uh, we don't get a very good video of the sumo flying, but honestly, eh, I'm just out here having a good time. Good news though, that's the first time I've had my own Jolly Logic shoot release work properly. Um, it's worked for everybody else, so there's probably an argument to be made that it's user error, but I didn't change anything. And what I love about flying at Lucerne is like, it's just a nice little stroll. You know, you get your steps in, but it's very flat. In a lot of other places I fly, there's a serious danger of just like snapping your ankle off in a gopher hole or running into a rattlesnake. Hey, all the fins are attached. That's nice. A little rough landing there, but you know, battle scars. Okay, back at home base, let's talk about this stuff in here. Um, recently, well, about a month ago, or a little more, I think, um, I became the owner of a little over 200 rocket motors. Um, it was kind of, sort of, like a buy everything or buy nothing type deal. I don't think that was really fully the case, but if essentially, the buy everything price was such a ridiculously good deal that I was like, I have to do this. Um, even though it wasn't the most fiscally reasonable decision, we'll say. So, I have unloaded a bunch of the motors of friends and kind of split things up. There was two of my dream motors in there, an AMW M2200 Skidmark and an N2801 Skidmark is on my dream list. But I actually have an N2800 Demo Skidmark, uh, which was the uncertified, unreleased version, which is really, really crazy. And... Uh, spoiler alert, we're going to put it in the Arcus, at, hopefully at Airfest this, well, 2024. Anyway, a friend of mine who wanted a bunch of the stuff also happens to have a cool collection of Cosden stuff. So, we worked out a partial trade deal, so I have this Cosden 541050 case, and I also got this AMW38640 case so that I can fly some of the motors that I own. And perhaps most excitingly for my little 15-year-old Rocketeer heart still, the Cosden M1130 Slow. This is a 5 grain 75 millimeter M motor that goes in the same 6000 case that we flew my dad's M2240 in this past spring. What's that going in? I don't really know yet, but I'm kind of thinking my 5.5 inch BSD Horizon because it's a very era-appropriate flight, right? 
So uh, that would be cool. Or we could fix the seven and a half inch Iris or the seven and a half inch Honest John would all be really, really cool rockets for that motor. The, the Horizon will go the highest though. And that's kind of cool. And it hasn't flown yet. It's also not finished yet, but we don't need to talk about that. That's pretty much all I got for you. Uh, just a quick little rocket launch day in the life type vlog, I guess. Up uh, there you go. We got a new Cosden M motor and some new cases. Got rid of some motors that I didn't need anymore and some more of them are going away. Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson. Shout out to all the Patreon people whose names are rolling across the screen right now. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time.